Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Me? I'm ready to take on one of the questions that's most often asked and is I think one of the biggest challenges here at our YouTube channel. And that is, which screencasting software do I prefer? ScreenFlow or Camtasia? <laughs> I know, you might not know what screencasting is. So let me tell you what that is first. Screencasting is the style of video that we use to create the videos that run on this channel or the videos that we publish to Facebook or the videos that I use as supporting content in my webinars. The technique is called screencasting and what it is is it's using our computer essentially as a desktop publishing tool but for video instead of for printed content. We use our computer and the screencasting software, either ScreenFlow or Camtasia, and it collects all of the different assets as we're recording. Right now it's doing that. It's recording in real time. The uh, video feed from my webcam, the audio feed from my microphone, the actual background computer feed from my computer, it pulls them all together and allows me to edit them together and then output a video for whatever purpose I happen to have in mind. It's truly magical as far as I'm concerned. It's given me a career beyond my original career in television. When we started doing this channel, screencasting is what made it so that I could produce video quickly and effectively at a high quality that basically provided the base for the growth of our YouTube channel here. So I am a big fan of screencasting. But you and I today are gonna to take a look at the two main contenders in the screencasting world, ScreenFlow and Camtasia. That's coming up on Dottotech. When we talk about screencasting software, there's really two applications which dominate the landscape. One of them is a Mac only product called ScreenFlow, which frankly I've used the most. And the other is Camtasia, which is cross-platform. And fortunately for us, it's identical as far as the interface goes in both Windows and Mac, or at least the latest version is. So let's take a look at these two applications and give you an idea of how they fit as far as creating screencasts goes. Uh, I'm gonna warn you right up front. I'm not gonna tell you why one is better than the other because as far as I'm concerned, if you master either one, you can do spectacular screencasting publishing. So it's gonna be the one that just kind of catches your fancy or that you feel you understand the most. Let's begin by taking a look at ScreenFlow. And what I'm bringing up right now is a uh, is an actually edited document that I already have produced uh, that I produced from this past week. Now this is a video that I recorded to support a webinar that I was delivering. I pre-recorded some of the video for demo insertion in the webinar. And if we take a look at the ScreenFlow window, it's actually pretty straightforward what's happening. Right here in the center, we see the video. This is actually a preview window, but it's a real-time preview window of exactly what we're gonna be outputting to video. So this is a WYSIWYG editor to a certain extent. We can actually move elements around. We can even move them around while they're playing. I can adjust the size and the scale of the video. I can bring additional graphical elements in. I can adjust the audio. I can add text. All of that happens in real time kind of in front of us here as we compose what our video is going to look like. Now each of these different elements or assets within our video is reflected kind of the properties are reflected over here in our tool area where we can manage the properties for video, for audio, uh, for the screen background it, it itself. We can add text, we can add uh, arrows and annotations, we can add graphics, and we can import additional elements here by bringing in additional elements from a media library, which can be anything from photos to audio clips to full videos that we can import. 3D graphics can all be imported and implemented and added to our video. So we've got total control over the screen itself here in the center and any assets that we want to bring in through these tools here on the side. Now down in the bottom is a very important part of the whole setup because this is our timeline. This is where the, uh, it's what, what we have here is what we call a multi-track editor, meaning that each of the elements on our screen takes up a track and the tracks, uh, the, what happens with the tracks is from left to right, we see the passage of time. So if I hit play, you see the playback head moving along as the video plays in the screen. Now there's another relationship here other than left to right and that's from top to bottom and the fact that we have different layers. So each of these elements within the video is on a different layer within the video. So we can actually choose what's in the foreground or background. So you see here, I've got slides, I've got uh, uh, this this background image, this honeycomb background image, and I'll show you exactly what happens. If I slide it up towards the top, to see how it then covers up each of the elements and then reveals them in turn. That's because the farther down it is, the farther to the background 
that element is. So that's how we create the layering effects within the software. Then we the within then what we do is we compose our video by playing, adding different elements, timing them out, bringing in additional pieces. We we can have different transitions if we take a look right here. Look where this slide is going to change. You see this slide that I have up here in the background? It'll change from one so we'll the to the other and what happens there is there's actually just an overlap here which causes, see, that little transition to happen right there. So we can actually see it physically happen ahead of us. And I can change the type of transition here to be, say, a circle wipe, which will now change how that transition occurs between the two. So we've got really nice control over pretty much every aspect of everything within the video. So now let me jump over into Camtasia and take a look. And it is remarkably similar, I think you will agree, to ScreenFlow. This is our preview screen right here, or the canvas, where we see what's actually going to be output when we create the video. It is, as is in ScreenFlow, an interactive screen that allows us to basically just click and drag and position objects exactly where we want. And the objects have the same relationship. Down here in the timeline, it's uh, it's a layered relationship. So anything towards the top of the, of the tracks and the higher tracks is in the foreground, whereas things behind are in the lower tracks. We have a media bin with all of our different assets. And then we have all of our different tools down the left-hand side here, which allows us to apply different, uh, apply different preferences to each of the elements in the video. So the physical structure of the two tools is pretty much identical. What I'll do though now is I'll dive in and I'll show you two different uh, treatments that we do. One of them is dealing with text, animating text and adding text to a video. And the other is dealing with the video itself and dealing with the green screen. You see here in this video here that the green screen is still appearing behind me. I haven't keyed it out. We use a green screen to key out the background so that my head can be, as you see, floating over top of the background, which creates a nice, uh, I think, a nice visual representation. So here in Camtasia, we haven't yet keyed out the green screen, whereas in ScreenFlow it has been. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into ScreenFlow and I'm going to take out off that what we call a chroma key or the green screen here. So now we see that they both have the green screen behind them. Let me show you how you remove it in ScreenFlow, simple as can be, it's a video filter where we go in and we click on the video track. So that's giving us this track here. And one of the things that I want to point out before we actually do that is do you notice in that track that we've got the little waveform? That tells me that's what I'm, that's the actual audio track showing the waveform, which is a big editing advantage because as you look at it, if you make a mistake as you're, as you're recording and you want to have a big pause and you want to kind of do a pickup, you can see the gaps in as you're speaking because you see the waveform, which gives you a visual identifier as to where you are in your video. It's actually pretty slick, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Right now, what we want to do is we want to remove that green background from behind my melon. So I turn on the chroma key and then I can choose the exact color that's keyed out by choosing this little color bar, which will allow me to then select within the uh, screen. If it hasn't picked up the chroma key perfectly, it allows me to select the screen. So the software is smart. It's going to look for a consistent color to key out. If I wanted to, I could key out the shirt color. See that? And now we're left kind of, it's finding all the flesh tones and the, the close colors to my shirt and it's keying that out. But obviously we want to key the background out instead. So that's how easy it is to remove the background using ScreenFlow. Now, to be fair, we spend a little bit of energy here uh, making sure that our green screen is nice and evenly lit so that it's easy to key out. So I've done some technical setup that makes it a little bit easier. And if you have a very busy background, you don't have a, a green screen, it's going to be difficult to key out the background. But if you set everything up right, you can see it's quite simple. Now, the way that it works in Camtasia is philosophically quite a bit different. What Camtasia does is instead of having just a, 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 a filter that we add, instead they consider it to be a video effect. So if we see here, we have got a little tool on the left-hand side called visual effects. And what we do in that case is we take that tool and we drag it down on top of the, uh, on top of, sorry, we'll go, I have to open it up. I have to grab the remove color tool. That's what I got to do. You know, we drag that down and drop it on top of the video track. So we're basically applying that tool to the video track. So that then adds an option here in the preferences menu that allows me to choose the chroma key color. I can just choose the eyedropper tool and then let me choose the eyedropper tool again. I missed it. There we go. And then choose the color and it keys out the background. So philosophically, what happens here is in ScreenFlow, we have the track selected 
and then we apply the we apply any uh, changes to the track using the tools in the right hand menu bar here with Camtasia we instead of that we take whatever effect we want to apply to the video track and we drag it and drop it upon it and then we set the parameters of that it's a philosophical difference in how the software works but as soon as you master that concept you have the basis of how each of these applications works it's actually quite magic now let's take a look at that being applied in a second place so let's look at how that works say as far as adding a little text element to a video so here I've got now these these slides are actually slides in the background that I've added I've added a nice reflection and all that sort of stuff so that's not what we're talking about we're talking about kind of titling text that we're gonna bring in so I'm gonna add some text and what I do is I choose the text tool and then I have to click on the plus button here within ScreenFlow and that drops a new text uh, element into the timeline Do you see it appears right here and I can type in something here I can say this is terrific there we go. So I've added this little bit of text. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to push it up here. And so here we've got this piece of text that's here. Now you could, of course, adjust the font and the background color and all of those sorts of things as you would expect. But what I want to show you is how we animate that text or how we make it a little bit more active, bringing it in and out, because that is an increasingly important thing to be able to do. That's one of the reasons we use Camtasia for all of our little one minute tech tips is because they're very text centric. And I think Camtasia handles text a little bit better than does ScreenFlow. But let me show you what happens. So in ScreenFlow, what we do is we want to add a transition. We want to add a way for it to get into and out of the, uh, out of the scene. So when I add a transition do you see how a little transition has appeared here we've got a little and this is just a fade so if i let it play it's just going to fade in uh, let me just go here fade it just fades in but if i click on the drop down menu you can see all of the different types of transitions that i can have uh, that i can use with this so for example if i wanted to have this kind of roll in from the side i could choose a cube transition and now watch what happens as it comes in. Here it goes. I hit play and, how that all pulls together and see it kind of flips up like that. So that gives us that ability. So that's how we apply transitions within ScreenFlow. All right, let's do the same thing now in Camtasia. Let's see how Camtasia deals with text. And I actually think Camtasia does a stronger job and you'll see why in a moment. I'm just going to delete the background. I think it'll show better just on a black background. So we find our text tools in annotations within Camtasia. And I'm just going to drag this tool here out, this text out, and I'm going to put in the same thing. Something, something terrific. There we go. So I've got a nice little bit of text here on the background. Oopsie, let's just, just going to stretch that out a little bit. And what'll happen is, there we go, is instead of with within ScreenFlow, we applied the transition Two, we just selected the track and then we applied the transition. Remember the philosophy behind Camtasia. Instead of that, what we do is we take our effect and we drop it on top. We basically apply it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose behaviors, which is the easiest way to bring text in or to, to manage it there. And I'm going to choose this effect and I'm going to drop it on top of that text track, of the text block that we just created. And if we take a look here, if I just pop, you'll see kind of that now it has this jump and fall set against the, set against the, the, the text string. So let's watch it, how it's gonna look. So here it comes. In the sharing link, and you can determine though with that link. Isn't that great? The person using the link can So you've got these kind of controls. Now I can just delete that one if I want, just by clicking on it, I can delete it. And let's have it uh, pop up. Let's try that pop-up one, one problem with this software is when you start doing this stuff you end up just playing with it for hours and hours there's the pop-up so you get an idea here for how the text effects work and if you're doing a, a video that you will that you're gonna have supporting text where you want people to read the text especially if it's designed for say Facebook where people aren't gonna have the audio but they're just gonna be reading the text you can create a far more compelling narrative using these sorts of tools to apply your text than the more static tools which we have in ScreenFlow. So that's two different ways to look 
at these applications. Personally, I find composing video, this, com this composition screen in ScreenFlow is much faster for creating most of our video work. The one exception being that in the world of text, I believe that Camtasia does a terrific job. The end of the day, regardless of which application you choose, I don't think that you can make a bad choice. Both of these tools will do a terrific job of creating wonderful screencasts for you. You master the tools and you will be able to produce compelling content quickly and effectively using either tool. Well, I hope that you found today's video to be useful. Now, I've got two favors to ask of you. First, please subscribe to this channel. And while you're at it, you might want to give us a thumbs up. Secondly, please subscribe to our newsletter. And that way I can tell you about our upcoming events, tutorials, and trainings that we provide on a regular basis here at Dottotech. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.